Hey, I'm your TA. I'm, my name's Syed. We're going to go over a couple of uh, the stuff that you went over your first couple weeks here. Uh, we're going to start with electronegativity, move on to solubility, and then proteins. Let's start with electronegativity. So first, when we look at electronegativity, we're going to look at the periodic table. In terms of the periodic table, electronegativity increases this way and increases this way. So in biology, what you're going to be, what's going to be most important for you in biology, you know, in, in terms of electronegativity, is to know this little mnemonic. Do you see that? That says FONCH, and that's probably the easiest way for me, uh, as your TA, even to remember uh, the electronegativities of the most important um, molecules you'll be dealing or most important atoms you'll be dealing with uh, in biology. So, considering that, let's go over and talk about solubility. Solubility, what can we say about solubility? Uh, so the number one thing about solubility is like dissolves like it's got a close-up of that. Like dissolves like. It's a very big, important um, topic in biology. Um, so, then, uh, so then with that, when you talk about something that's polar, like let's say we have a carboxyl group, right? And you know that this group usually a lot of times you'll see it listed like this. the minus charge here. You'll see it without the H basically is what I'm doing here. Um, so the one without the H you can see is charged. That one is going to uh, be soluble in water. Water is a polar molecule and so polar, polar this will dissolve in polar water. And the same goes for nonpolar molecules. Nonpolar molecules also will dissolve in other nonpolar molecules. Um, but when you think of something like let's say oil, oil is not going to dissolve in water. Oil is a nonpolar entity. Uh, whereas water uh, is polar, as I said. Hello, my name is Rishabh. I'm your other TA over here. I'm just going to talk about uh, electronegativity, pick up where uh, Sai left off. So anyway, Sai was technically talking about uh, this mnemonic font over here. And it shows um, uh, that F is more electronegative than N or C or any of them. First, I want to let you know that electronegativity is actually just a measure of how closely a particular atom holds its electrons uh, in relation to its nucleus. So if you have something like fluorine or oxygen, um, because it's regarded as highly electronegative, it will hold its electrons close to its nucleus. Okay. Um, whereas H, it's not very electronegative, so hydrogen's electron might be further away. Now, if you have a bond between a highly electronegative atom and one that isn't, as depicted by this line. The one that's more electronegative will hold the shared, ad, uh, sh shared electrons closer to its own nucleus, right? So because oxygen is more electronegative, um, it, the electrons between this bond will be closer to the oxygen, right? Now this really gives rise to the concept of polarity, um, where say this bond in a water molecule, the electrons are held closer to the oxygen as we discussed before, and we can show that by this arrow. This is just showing that uh, the electrons are closer to the oxygen. And because they are closer, there's more electrons in this area, this part of this molecule will have a partial negative charge, and this part of the molecule will have a partial positive charge just because the electrons are closer to this oxygen molecule. Right? Now, this gives rise to the concept of polarity, and um, as I was saying, that like dissolves like. So, if you were to have another molecule that has partial positives, or partial negatives, um, 
like this water molecule, then that will be able to interact with and therefore dissolve into water. Now, if you had something that didn't have the partial positives or partial negatives, it cannot interact with water and therefore it will not dissolve in water. And something like that would be, say, methane, right, where you have... So that's what methane looks like, it's actually CH4, and this bond between the C and the H, it's uh, about equal electronegativity, so the electrons are uh, shared evenly between them, and because of that, uh, there's no area in this molecule where there's a higher um, amount of electrons in a particular place, so there's no net partial positive charge or partial negative charge. But if you have something like ammonia, then because N is more electronegative than H, then N will hold its electrons, the shared electrons, closer to its own nucleus. And therefore, N will have a partial negative charge, and H, because its electrons are being pulled away, will have a partial positive charge. Now, because this water molecule has a partial negative here, and this ammonia has a partial positive here, this side of the ammonia is able to interact with this side of the water molecule because of that attraction. Right? And it's because of this attraction uh, that ammonia is able to dissolve into water, or light dissolves light. The polarity of this and the polarity of this are alike, and therefore able to dissolve. As I said, there's no polarity here, and therefore it cannot dissolve in water. Actually, if you had um, a solution of these two together, in a beaker, and you're going to get uh, two distinct layers. Howdy, I'm Rich, I'm your other TA over here. <laughs> Cut that, I'm not. <laughs>